Hi, this is Kantri. I welcome you all for this session. In this session, I'm going to teach you introduction to computer memory. Once again, I repeat the topic, introduction to computer memory. So what is a computer memory? A memory is used to store data, instruction, information, and intermediate values, or else Memory is used to store and retrieve data, or else memory or storage or hardware devices that are capable of storing and fetching the data. So why we need memory if we want to store the information or data we need of computer memory? Okay, I will ask you a question. For example, today my breakfast is a cup of coffee and a cake. So. Next question will be, what is my breakfast on the same day last year? I cannot be able to answer the question because our human brain is too small. It cannot be able to store all the information. So we are going for computer memory where we are going to save all the information and we can give it back later as we like. So what is the use of computer memory? It's used to store data, instruction, information, and intermediate values. We can store as well as we can retrieve. We can view it back later. So we can store or fetch. So fetch is nothing but we can view the data as we like. So we can able to write the code and we can view the data as we like. It's called as fetching. So now we are going to see the computer memory hierarchy. So computer memory can be divided into two types, namely primary memory and secondary memory. In primary memory, there are two types of primary memory, namely RAM, random access memory. And next one is ROM, ROM, read only memory. In secondary memory, we have fixed drives, removable drives, cloud storage. So in fixed drives like hard disk drive, solid state drive, CD compact disk, DVD, digital video disk or digital versatile disk, as well as flash and external drives or example for removable drives. So once again, I explain the computer hierarchy. So computer memory can be divided into two types, namely primary memory and secondary memory. So in primary memory, we have two types, RAM and ROM. So RAM access memory and read only memory. In secondary memory, we have fixed drives, removal drives and cloud storage. Now we are going to see one by one. So computer memory is divided into two types, namely primary memory. In primary memory, we are going to see RAM and ROM. In secondary memory, hard disk, SSD, optical disk, magnetic tape, online storage, or example for secondary memory. So next comes RAM. So RAM stands for random access memory. It's a temporary memory. The information inside the RAM can be changed or deleted. So RAM is used to determine the performance of a computer. The speed or performance of a computer is based on the amount of RAM installed in the particular device or a system. RAM stores the current running information that are needed by CPU. So all the information will be stored in secondary memories like hard disk or SSD. So what information you need right now will be stored in RAM so that will be executed by CPU. So RAM is computer short-term memory. Since the information inside the RAM will be for short-term and it will be changed or deleted later on. So it is called a short-term memory. So RAM is a volatile memory, means that the information inside the RAM can be easily deleted. When the power is switched off, the information inside the RAM will not be no longer valid. So information inside the RAM will be deleted when power is switched off. The speed and performance of a system is directly related to amount of RAM you have installed. Yes, if you have higher RAM or higher capacity of the RAM, the speed will be increased. So in generally, the primary memory is a memory with high speed and less memory means the capacity of primary memory will be low, but speed is very high. When compared to secondary memory, secondary memory is huge memory, big in size, but the speed is very slow. But primary memory, the capacity of memory is 
low, but speed of the memory is very high. So RAM is a super fast temporary data storage. Since the information inside the RAM will keep on changing, it is called as temporary data storage. Here you can see the examples of RAMs. So now RAM can be divided into two types, namely dynamic RAM and static RAM. Dynamic RAM can also be called as DRAM. DRAM memory cell is made up of transistor and capacitors. So DRAM, each cell is made up of transistor and capacitor with an IC, integrated circuit. The data bits are stored in capacitor. Where you're going to store the information, we're going to store the information in capacitor in case of dynamic RAM. Static RAM is also called as SRAM. It's made up of transistor. It keeps data in memory as long as power is supplied. SRAM has to be refreshed periodically. Since the static the information reside inside the RAM, SRAM will be static. It has to be updated periodically. So, but in case of dynamic RAM, it will keep on updating periodically. But in case of SRAM, we want to refresh periodically. That is the difference between DRAM and SRAM. Now moving to ROM, read-only memory, where you can see some ROM chips right here. So it's a read-only memory, it's a type of non-volatile memory. The information inside the ROM cannot be deleted at any cost. So ROM is essential for basic input, reading and writing to peripheral devices and basic data management and the software for basic process for certain equities. So ROM is very mandatory when you switch off the computer, the program inside the ROM will execute it. It will check for basic input and output operations. And everything is right, it will load the operating system. So ROM stores a special program called as bootstrapping, bootloader, or boot program, or a bootstrap loader. It is automatically executed by the processor when turning on the computer. When you switch on the computer, the processor will execute a special program which is stored in ROM. What is the name of the program? The name of the program is Bootstrap Loader. So what Bootstrap Loader will do? The Bootstrap Loader reads the hard drive boot sector to load the operating system. During the startup process, diagnostic tests are performed such as power on self test that check the configuration for the devices and implement the routine testing for the connection of peripherals, hardware, external memory devices. The bootstrap loader or bootstrap program then loads to initialize the OS. So when you switch on the computer, the CPU execute a special program called as bootstrap loader. If the bootstrap loader will check for diagnostic tests as well as it will check post or on self test as well as check for configuration device everything is working properly then it will load the OS. Once again what is wrong? When you switch on your computer there is a special program inside the room will be executed by CPU that will check all the devices are working properly and then it will load the operating system. That is the actual task of ROM. Next moving on to secondary memory. Secondary memory refers to the storage devices such as hard drive, solid state drives. It may also refers to removable storage media such as USB or flash drive, CDs and DVDs. So what is a secondary memory? If you want to store the data just permanently, we are in need of secondary memory, such as hard drive, solid state drive, SSD, or a CD or DVD or flash drive. The secondary memory is the lowest and cheapest form of memory. Okay. Lowest and cheapest form of memory since the secondary memory is very big and the speed of the memory will be very slow. The data in secondary memory cannot be processed directly by the CPU. It must first copy it into primary storage for dust RAM. It's a very important point. See, as I told before, there is a huge information in secondary memory. What you need right now will be stored into RAM and executed by CPU. Secondary storage devices or permanent storage of programs and data. Here we can see the example for primary memory where you can see hard disk, external hard disk, CD, DVD, SSD, tape drives, and flash drives. 
and next we are going for online storage now this is a trend of online storage where we are going to store the data in cloud or in server so what is the advantage so data will be centralized wherever you go we can use the data as well as we can increase or decrease the capacity of the storage based on our requirements so so example for online storage or amazon cloud drive apple icloud box dropbox google drive and mediafire i think you guys have enjoyed this video thanks for watching this video if you have any queries just post it on comments